everybody. Thanks for joining me today, Dr. Ross Marcagiani, with another great word of the week. Today's word of the week we're going to be talking about is vitamin D3 a rat poison? And should we be concerned? So I've been getting a lot of questions from patients um, who do use Dr. Google and say, hey, I noticed that vitamin D3 is a poison, specifically a rat poison. Should I be concerned? So I want to make sure we address this for all our, our viewers. Okay, so we'll be talking about if vitamin D3 is a rat poison, is vitamin D3 beneficial for humans? How do we know it's safe and how much to take? So let's dive in. So big disclaimer here, I want you to focus on this. Vitamin D is extremely beneficial and important for humans, okay? Now when it comes to animals like rodents, like mice, cats, dogs, cholecalciferol, also known as D3, vitamin D3, is poisonous to, to the animals, okay? It can induce something called hypophosphatremia and hypercalcemia. Big words that just mean it increases phosphorus in the animal's blood and it increases calcium in the animal's blood. And basically what happens is it causes the blood to become extremely thick and it causes the animal to have a heart attack, okay? That's how these animals die if they consume this. But for humans, it is much safer and we can consume a much larger amount than compared to an animal here. For example, the Merck manual says 0.1 milligrams per kilogram could be potentially harmful to an animal. Now, if we, if we transfer that equation to a 100-pound animal, typically like a dog, you could potentially provide harm to that dog at 0.181 international units. So a very small amount can be harmful to the animal. I personally take 10,000 to 20,000 international units a day and I keep a track of my, my markers, which we'll talk about in just a second, and I'm perfectly fine and I'm better off for it. So we just wanna make sure people are aware here that this is completely different and they act in complete different mechanisms or at least our ability to absorb the vitamin um, is much greater than the animal. That's the important aspect to realize here, okay? But yes, vitamin D is a rat poison. So the recommended daily amount, again, that the R, uh, this is the RDA, is about 600 international units per day. Again, going back to that equation that we talked about, 0.181 of a 100 pound animal, could be potentially fatal. And the RDA even recommends, you know, and this is really, really low, uh, very, very safe standard is 600 international units. Um, I recommend more than that, but we make sure we quantitate that number. And we'll explain that in just a second. So just to confirm even further here, this is all just, I did a 30 second uh, PubMed search here and this is all the benefits that we found to vitamin D and by the way I did not put any uh, article on here in regards to vitamin D and its benefit of COVID which is which is a big topic right now and a lot of research is going into that so that's even excluding vitamin D and its benefits for COVID but uh, one article looks at vitamin D and potentially helping cystic fibrosis Another article here looks at potentially improving muscle growth with, in with increased vitamin D. Everyone knows um, about the benefit of fracture prevention, bo uh, uh, bone quality, bone uh, mineralization improvement with vitamin D. Uh, another one here uh, looking at the aspect of helping improve autoimmunity with vitamin D. Another article looking at the potential benefits to improving stage 5 kidney disease with vitamin D. Um, Another article in rats showing helping improve epilepsy and epileptic seizures. Another article here showing that uh, a correlation, I know correlation isn't always a causation, but correlation with preterm babies having very severe low amounts of vitamin D. So helpful in the maturation in the, in the womb uh, in development of the baby with increasing vitamin D. So just again, showing you the benefit of vitamin D here. And then making sure that we're not just taking vitamin D blindly. That's the major issue here, is making sure you're not 
taking, you know, 20,000 units for four months on end and you're not having, you know, you're not looking at your 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So looking at your 125 dihydroxy vitamin D levels. Usually we want a bare minimum around 50 uh, micrograms per deciliter. Usually I would like it around an 80 micrograms per deciliter. Uh, some research has shown that we can have um, some toxic exposure if our vitamin D levels are starting to get up to around 150 to 200 micrograms per deciliter. And we're not even close to that. At least I'm making sure I'm monitoring my patients that they're not even close to that level. Again, right around 80 milligrams per, uh, uh, 80 milligrams per deciliter. And we want to make sure we look at your phosphorus, making sure phosphorus is staying well below the 4.5 milligrams per deciliter, which, which if you're going above that, you're starting to get toxic levels amount of phosphorus accumulating. Making sure we're looking at your calcium levels. You usually want to keep calcium somewhere around at least an 8.9 up to a 10 um, milligrams per deciliter, but make sure they start getting up to around a 10 milligrams per deciliter for your calcium. We want to keep a close eye on that. Looking at your kidney markers, making sure we look at a marker called your GFR. This is your glomerular filtration rate. We want to see it at least above a 60. Um, but if that starts to come down, we could have some issues potentially overdosing with vitamin D. Uh, but there could be multiple issues related to that. Looking at your parathyroid hormone, okay? That's really important uh, because vitamin D and bone mineralization can influence that. So making sure we're looking at these markers. Here's a really good study I just want to talk about because this is patients talk to me about this all the time. You know, they come to me and they say, oh, my doctor prescribed me ergocalciferol. That's D2. And I usually tell them it's not a good source to be taking. You don't absorb it very well. And typically most doctors, it's a one size shoe fits all. Here's 50,000 international units of D2. You take this. Uh, one time a day and it lasts you for, you know, it's it's supposed to be over a week. So they give you a one-time bolus of 50,000 international units to be taken over the week for X amount of weeks or X amount of months. So coming back here to D2 ergocalciferol versus D3 cholecalciferol. D3, this article showed, and you can see how long they, they, they ran the study for, from January 1966 to July 2011, they collected all uh, vitamin D samples and compared to, to D2, taking in D2 and D3. And they found that D3 was significantly uh, more absorbed. It, was, it had a significant uh, improved absorption rate, a clinically significant improved absorption rate. So Toss your D2 uh, ergocalciferol that you get from the pharmacy. Make sure you take D3, significantly better absorption rate. And then typically what I recommend, somewhere around 1,000, maybe even up to 20,000 IUs of D3 with K2. Vitamin K2 helps further increase the absorption of that vitamin D. But again, making sure you're getting your blood checked at least bare minimum two months with those markers that I talked about, your vitamin D, your calcium, your phosphorus, your kidney markers with your GFR, your parathyroid hormone, making sure you're dosing appropriately and correctly here. So don't be scared. Don't be alarmed that, uh, that vitamin D is used in very small amounts as a rat poison, but again, I could take too much water and that could be poisoning, right? Too much of anything can be, poison, uh, can, can be harmful here or toxic. So just, uh, just wanted to provide that information. Thank you for your time today and have a wonderful day. And as always, share this information with anyone who can benefit. If you want to get your vitamin D tested, please reach out. Thanks and have a great day.